Hey Brian from Snake Bites here. Ever since I've been keeping snakes, the one thing that's really fascinated me is watching snakes feed. It's just amazing how an animal with no arms can take down such a large meal. We're gonna take a closer look at how snakes feed. You're watching Snake Bites. Well, I love all animals and I hate to see anything suffer. The fact is snakes need to eat. And in this case, these huge snakes love large frozen rabbits. While we do have to feed live from time to time, I'm not a proponent of feeding live in this video or any videos that we make. But it is hard to deny the nature in one of its purest forms. Even with all these years and all these animals I've kept, I still have to sit back and watch in amazement. Like I said, feeding snakes is truly incredible. No matter how many snakes I feed, I'm always fascinated. I don't know if it's that primitive nature or what it is, but they're just really incredible animals, especially when you get into the big pythons and boas. You know, stuff like this reticulated python or a Burmese python, you know, these guys will eat rabbits. And it's just amazing that an animal that size will power through a rabbit and just pound it down like unbelievable. Again, you gotta pay these guys a lot of attention and make sure you respect them when you feed them. You don't want to get bit by these guys because it's going to hurt an awful lot. Not all snakes eat every single time and now that we're into the breeding season, there's even a less likelihood that some of these big snakes are going to feed. They go off of food during the breeding season a lot, especially reticulated pythons. She's showing a lot of interest but I have a feeling we're going to strike out on this one. Again, this is kind of part of doing it, but you always want to keep your eyes on them because I'm telling you what, in one second this animal could just snatch it up. Again, that's something that happens this time of the year with the breeding season. It's not that uncommon. Probably time to move on to another snake that's a little bit less into the breeding season and still really willing to feed. Yeah, I have a feeling we have a winner here. You can see how this animal just perked up as soon as I opened the cage. She smells this rabbit. Again, you want to be pretty careful when you're going in. Keep your arms and hands away if you can. And really should use tongs if you really want to be smart. I guess I'm not that smart. Sometimes you have to agitate them just a little bit to get them enticed. She's so interested, but she's just not willing to bite it. Sometimes in cases like this, you just leave the rabbit in because it, for whatever reason, it seems to be a little freaked out, but I know it's really interested. If you just set this thing down, I can almost bet you five or 10 minutes from now, she's gonna be eating the animal. Miss the strike though. It's always fun to see that part of it. Now that's the strike that I look for when I'm feeding a big snake. So much power. It's just incredible when they just rip it out of your hands. But again, that tells you how strong they are and how much you have to respect a big animal like this. What's so interesting about snakes and what gives them the ability to eat such large food items is they have a very complex jaw structure and contrary to belief, they don't separate their jaws to feed. What it is, they have a very flexible bottom jaw with a bunch of weird parts to it that allows them to stretch it apart. And that's what allows them to get the prey into their mouths. Once it's into the esophagus, the esophagus actually contracts just like humans taking the food down, but what's more interesting is the fact that they actually undulate their spine and their muscles that takes it all the way down into the stomach. That's what makes them such incredible feeders. And I tell you what, it's really an amazing trait. And it, no matter how many snakes I feed, I'm always just blown away by watching them do that. Lastly, 
These animals are going to push their food right down into the midsection of their body, a little bit past mid. That's where their stomach is. They're going to find a warm place, which is really important for digestion with an ectothermic animal. And they're going to spend a couple days pretty much shutting most of their metabolism down and putting it all into digestion. And a really big prey can sometimes take several days, but in particular, the first 48 hours is when you're going to see the animal really lethargic and just spend all its time trying to digest. Again, a very primitive thing and unique just to reptiles. I'll just eating lunch, you know. It actually brings up a point of why, you know, I was doing that uh, feeding episode for the show. You know, snakes get the same food every day. You know what I mean? But the truth is, you guys eat the same stuff too. George, you always got Gatorade. Steve's always eating donuts. Don't you guys just want to change it up a little bit? You know? Yeah, this could hurt. <laughs> give me Worth a shot. <laughs> Alright guys, this is what I found here in the fridge. We got uh, hot anchovies. Oh, I haven't tried those before. I'll yeah, give that a shot. Got some marshmallow fluff. Oh, I haven't tried that. It's kind of... I don't know. If All right. it, it might be good. Well, it's good to eat plain. Like that. Tuna and olive oil. Never had that. I guess I'll give it a try. That so. sounds kind of good. Alright. <laughs> is it good? No? It's okay. Mm. That's nasty. Maybe it's expired. Maybe try yours and see. Oh my! It smells like cat food. It looks like balls. Oh! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Trying new things. Yeah, dude. George, George, it's your turn. Your turn. <laughs> I love it. Oh. 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 George, no, this has been a really bad experience. Look, no, look, 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 we're, look, we're done, we're done, we're done. You? Hey guys, come back! You try this, it's really good, it's nice to try new things. We should try more often, I'm telling you. I might bring this some of this tomorrow, where can I pick some of this up oh, at? For this week's comment of the week on the Haunted episode, the question was, do you believe in ghosts? And have you had any experiences? And Terrors Down Under said, I don't believe in ghosts, but I do believe in spirits sent to us to give us messages, signs, etc. Either to help us through something or to give us guidance and even make some mistakes through life. But I do know that there is some evidence that they do exist and it's everyone's choice whether to believe in them. Well, with a name like Terrors Down Under, I figured for sure you would believe in ghosts. And I don't know about the whole spirit thing, because I tell you what, I need some guidance in some of the terrible decisions I've been making lately. Anyways, you guys keep sending me creative comments, and I'm going to feature you on a future episode. All right, guys, it's Cal's Question Leak. This episode was all about feeding. Now, you know, most of these snakes will be eating rodents for the rest of their lives. I want to know if you could choose one food and one drink, and you had to eat for the rest of your life, what would it be? How about you, Kern? For me, it would be lasagna and Sprite. I'd go with uh, cheesy grated crunch from Taco Bell and Mountain Dew. That's a good one. Yeah, I'd go with beef jerky and some chocolate milk. Mm. Let me know what you guys think. What would you choose? Text or video comment below. So there it is, a closer look at feeding snakes. It's always so fascinating to see how they do it. A few weeks ago, I shouted out a forum in South Africa. I'm gonna shout out another one right now, sareptiles.co.za. It's a really cool place, and I really appreciate everything that the South Africans do. As a matter of fact, sticking on that theme, make sure you check out my buddy who's from South Africa, Donald Schultz, on Wild Recon, Tuesdays at 9 on Animal Planet. Until next time, you are watching Snake Bites. Ha, ha, ha.